What is up guys, I'm Heinrich and welcome to Bardent. Today I'm going to show you how to create a 2D platform controller script that allows for uh, vertical movement, jumping, double jumping if you want to, and even wall sliding and wall jumping. So let's just get into it. Okay, so once we've created a new project, the first thing uh, we're going to do is just mess around with some settings here. Uh, for now, the only thing we want to do is go to Project Settings, Physics 2D, and then change the gravity on the uh, y-axis from negative 9.81 to negative 30. Next, we're going to import the assets we're going to be using for this project. I will include a download link to where you can get the assets that I'm using for now. Uh, these assets are not final, and as I continue this project, uh, I will be updating the assets and uh, adding things to it. So right-click in this window over here and say import new assets go to the assets I provided I will provide both the PSD files and uh, JPEGs or P uh, PNGs and just right click and say import it's good to always say organize so let's say create folder call this sprites and put these sprites in here now in the sprites folder, select both of these uh, sprites that you just imported and we're going to change some settings here. First setting being multiple because it's a multiple sprite sheets or multiple sprites per sheet. Pixels per unit is 32 and filter mode is point and over down here by compression we're going to say none and apply. Now we want to cut the sprite sheets or slice them. Uh, slice, select grid by cell size, choose 32 by 32, keep the pivot at the center and click slice. Okay, cool. And I'll say apply. You can close that one out. And now for the character, um, so here's all the different animations. This is idle, running, jumping and falling. Uh, these animations aren't very good, but it's what I came up with in a short amount of time. And I will be improving on these as, as I go on. So for the character sprite sheet, we're going to say slice x32, y64, because it's a 2 by or 1 by 2 character. And the pivot we're going to set to bottom. So it's like in the middle bottom. We can click slice and we can see the pivots in all the correct locations. Now for this one, we're going to want to spend some time naming all the sprites just so it's quick, uh, easy to see which one's which in the in the project. So I'm going to do that. Okay, now that I've named all of the different uh, sprites for the animations, I'm going to click apply. And as we can see now, if we click on these arrows, we have all the different sliced up sprites. I'm not gonna get into animation on this in this episode. Uh, we'll just be using the default idle sprite just to get the character moving and jumping and all that stuff. And then I'll, I'll show you guys how to implement the animations in a, in a later video. So for now, what we wanna do is uh, just drag in the idle idle one sprite into the scene view and we will reset the transforms as we can see here is our little our little uh, man of his little hood um, now the first thing we want to do we're just gonna rename this game object to player and we're going to add a couple of things to him now so we're going to say uh, rigid body 2d so that he can take part uh, in the physics calculations and we're going to give him a collider which will consist of a, a box collider 2d and a circle collider 2d um, so the circle collider and the box letter combination uh, is useful for if you were to have 
slopes in your game, which I don't have yet, but you know, it's better to prepare for the future than not. So what you want to do is just adjust the box colliders so that it uh, fits your character nicely. Like so. And then adjust the circle collider. Well, actually, so the circle collider, we're going to set the radius to whatever this Y size is. So let's just make that a nice, uh, sorry, not the X size. Let's just make that a nice number of uh, 0 0.27. See if that looks good. Yeah, that looks good. So we use 0 0.27 for that. So half of that is 0 0.135. And we'll bring the Y position, or yeah, we'll bring the Y offset down all the way to the feet over here. So make the Y uh, 0 0.16, no, 14, 1395. Okay. So now we've set the, the circle collider so it touches the bottom of the feet. And I'll just bring the box collider into the circle so that it's like at the widest part of the circle over here. Okay, so now our character should be affected by gravity when we click play. And as you'll see, he will just boop, fall right down. Okay, so next, just to set up a quick basic little scene, uh, we're going to use tile maps. So what you do is you, in your uh, project hierarchy, you right click, 2D objects, tile map. And that'll create this grid and a tile map. Uh, next, you're gonna go up to window, 2D tile palette. And you can just dock this somewhere here for now. So we're gonna have to create two things. We're gonna have to create a, uh, a tile map folder And inside the tile map folder, we're going to create two more folders, one called uh, palette and one called assets. Now we can drag and drop our sprites into this tile palette. So we're going to click on environment and drag it in over here. Now we're going to go to tile map and select the assets folder. And this is going to generate the assets for the for the tile map. Now over here, if you have multiple tile maps, just watch out. If you if you click on it here, that doesn't mean that's the one you're going to be drawing on. You have to select it over here by active tile map. But so for now, we can just choose the brush or choose the, the box tool, select these two, and just get a. That's not what I want. Get a little surface going here for us to for our player to stand on. Just like that. Okay, now the player's still gonna fall through the, <laughs> the floor, I forgot about this. Um, so you have to click on tile map over here. We can, we can just close this tab for now. And then we say add component, uh, tile map collider 2D. You see it's gonna put a little box collider on every tile. But then we're also going to add a composite collider 2D. Now what we need to do is under our time map collider, we have to say use by composite. And this is adding the composite collider is automatically gonna add a rigid body 2D to the time map. Without it, the composite collider doesn't work. So we have to, to stop the, the map from falling when we start the game. We're gonna click, we're gonna change it from dynamic to static. Now, if we play the game, as you can see, the character just stands on the on the tiles. Perfect. Okay, so everything is basically set up now. Let's let's start with uh, just the basic movement script. So let's go back to assets. Let's create a new folder. We'll call it scripts. Now, clicking on the player, we're going to add component, and we're just going to type player controller. 2D. 
select a new script, create and add, and now double click over here to open up the script. Okay, so now we have our player controller script ready to go. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to create a public float called uh, max horizontal movement speed. Okay, what this is gonna do is in the inspector, we can set the max amount of speed we want the player to be able to move at left and right, okay? Next, we're going to add a public float movement uh, force because moving the character, we're going to be using, uh, using rigidbody2d.addForce, which means next we're going to need a private rigidbody2d just called RB. And this is going to hold a reference to the rigid body com component attached to my uh, player game object. So in start, we want to go ahead and say RB uh, equals get component of type rigid body 2D. And this is just automatically going to add uh, get the reference to the rigid body 2D. This is going to allow us to apply forces and set the velocity and whatnot. So there, there's two ways, or there, there's a bunch of different ways that we can go about doing movement for the character. Um, I've experimented around with some of them, and uh, some of them, they all have pros and cons as to how they work. A very common one that I see a lot of people do is to set the velocity of the uh, rigid body component directly, which gives you very nice movement in general. The problem being... Uh, if you try and add a force to your body, that uh, setting the velocity directly just cancels out any forces. So you, if you want to be able to have different forces have different effects on your body, you want to uh, you want to use forces to move the body. And just a little disclaimer here: this the script isn't perfect. Uh, it's taken me. <laughs> I'm very new to. Uh, C sharp and programming with Unity, and uh, so I'm by no means a professional. And this this is just what I've come up with so far. Uh, I've been working on the script for about a week, trying to get everything to work the way I wanted to. So I just thought I'd share it with you guys. So how movement is gonna work is when we click, when we hold down the A key, the character is gonna move left. When we hold down the D key, we're going to move right. So what we need to do is we need to keep track of what the, the player is currently inputting in, into the character. So how we're gonna do that is we're gonna go up here and we're gonna create another private float uh, and we're gonna call this move movement direction. I'm sorry if my typing's a bit terrible sometimes. Uh, I'm not used to typing with a microphone in front of my face so I can't see my keyboard at all times, but this is good practice to <laughs> start typing about looking at my keyboard. Anyway, so we have private float movement direction. And in update, we're gonna set movement direction equal to input dot get axis. And the axis we're getting is horizontal. So what this does is if we're holding in A, it sets uh, movement direction equal to negative one. If we're holding in D, it sets it equal to one. And if we're not pushing down either, um, it's gonna set movement direction to zero. Another function we could use here is get axis raw, which takes a second to switch to go between zero and one. So it'll, uh, you'll, you'll, get, you'll actually get a float number uh, so depending on what kind of movement we want, you can try out both and see which one you like better. But for my purposes, get axis is what we need to use. So I made a mistake explaining this. Get axis raw returns either negative one, zero, or one, whereas get axis returns a float between negative one and one. Uh, towards the end, you can see me struggling to figure out why my character isn't moving the way I wanted to. 
uh, this is why. Okay, so now that we're getting the player input, we want to move the character based on that input. So we need to uh, use the fixed update method. And this is very simple to do. All we're going to do is uh, say, we're going to create a new vector2 and we're going to call this force to add. So when we're attempting to move, this is the force we're going to add to the player's rigid body. And we're going to set this equal to new vector2 uh, move, movement force. And we're going to multiply this by movement direction. So what's happening here is, uh, why is this giving me? Oh, because it's vector two and zero. So we're not adding any force in the y direction, but we're adding movement force times the movement direction to, uh, we're setting that, that equal to force add. So when movement direction is negative one, we're gonna add a negative force. And if it's equal to positive one, it's a positive force. Next, we wanna apply this force to the rigid body. So we're gonna say rigid body dot add force. And we're going to then say force to add. Now, I believe this should allow us to uh, move the character. Well, we need to first set a force. Let's turn that off. Okay, so I'm gonna set my movement force here equal to 10. Now, if, <laughs> okay, <laughs> sorry, I forgot about this. Uh, under rigid body 2D, you wanna go into constraints and you wanna say freeze, rota uh, freeze rotation Z. So our player should now be able to move. First, we need to set the amount of force that is applied to the character when we're holding down the A or D key and then we click play and he should move. Perfect. But as you can see, this, is, this isn't very great. If we let go of the A or D key, he just kind of keeps going until he eventually slows down. The reason he's slowing down now is because of friction between him and the floor. Um, we don't want this though, because what's going to happen is when we later on have platforms, when we jump into the sides of those platforms, the player is just gonna get stuck on them. So we need to go, okay, so now I need to create a new folder and I'm gonna call this folder materials. And now inside of materials, I'm going to say create new physics material 2D and I'm just gonna call this player material. And this player, material fr player materials friction, I'm going to set to zero. I'm going to click on player and under the rigid body 2D material, I am going to drag this new material. So now as you see when I play, if I move in a certain direction, the character is just never going to slow down. He's just going to keep going off in this direction forever and ever and ever. So what we want to do next is limit the velocity of the player as he's moving sideways. Because now if, if we keep holding in A or D key, even though we won't see it, he just accelerates into infinity and it'll just keep getting faster and faster and faster. So we need to limit the velocity somehow. So to clamp the horizontal velocity, it's quite simple. All we need to do is, with an if statement, check that if rb.velocity.x is greater than max horizontal movement speed, okay? And in here, we're then going to say rigidbody.velocity.x is equal to a new vector two. And in the x direction, we're gonna set it to uh, max horizontal movement speed. Sorry if I've been saying that wrong. And the y is just going to be rb.velocity.y. Sorry, this should not be .x, it should be. So, so if the 
the velocity of the richer body in the x direction is greater than the maximum speed that we want, we're just going to set it back equal to that the speed that we do want it to be. So this is this only applies now if the character is moving right. So now I want an else if rigid body dot velocity dot x is less than max horizontal movement speed, except this should be negative max horizontal movement speed. Now we're going to set rb dot velocity equal to a new vector to negative max horizontal movement speed and rb dot velocity dot y. So now you'll see that when we go back to the game, if we click here on the player, um, just drag the script up here so we can see it better. We're done with this. Okay. So now if we set our max horizontal movement speed to one, and we click play, and we try and move sideways, our speed is a lot slower. But as you can see, when we let go of the button, he's still gonna go off into uh, go off into the sunset by its own. We'll fix this in just a, in just a second. But what I want you to see now is when we do this, I'm just gonna add a little statement here. It's gonna say debug dot log um, rigid body dot velocity dot x. So now when we play the game, uh, we're playing the game and we're busy printing out the velocity of the character in the x direction. We've set the max horizontal movement speed to one. So that's what the velocity should be limited at. But when we move sideways now, as you'll see, it's not one. In fact, it's quite a bit more than one. Um, it took me a long time to figure out what was happening here and I'm, I'm pretty sure I still don't understand it quite right. But I think what's happening is uh, in the script here when we say rigid body uh, rigid body dot add force, the force isn't added instantly. Force is added over a period of time. So by the time we're setting the velocity again, more force has been added. I'm I'm not an expert on how this system works, but uh, that's what I've noticed. So what we can do to fix this is. Uh, under rigid, here where we say rigid body add force, we just say comma, force mode, force mode td dot impulse. So what force mode 2 dot impulse does is it makes it so this, this force is added instantly. This in, so the whole force is added instantly and no more force is being added after the fact. So if we go back to the game now and we play it, I mean, sideways. Okay, oops. I made a mistake here as well. Uh, so this debug.log, we want to add, of course, after we clamp the velocity. I don't know why I'm such an idiot. And so if we play it now, You'll see that when we move sideways, the velocity does not go over this clamped velocity. Uh, yeah, so this is how we limit our horizontal velocity. Now, the next thing we need to take care of is the friction. This is also uh, quite simple to do. So I'm just gonna stop here and we'll head back to our script. Okay, so to add the friction here, to add this uh, fake friction, what we need to do is first check if uh, movement movement direction equals zero, because we only want the friction to be applied when when the player is not attempting to move in a certain direction. So this is just to slow the character down to a stop once we let go of the uh, A or D key. Okay, now we're going to need a private vector two, 
and we're just going to call this velocity. And now we need a public float ground friction level. Hope that name makes sense. Okay, so we have the public float ground friction level. Now here at the uh, where we where we set the friction, what's going to happen is we're going to say velocity equals rigid body dot velocity. So now we just have a vector two keeping track of the velocity of the rigid body, and now we can manipulate this now. Next, we're going to say velocity. So this is referring to that vector two that we declared up top. Dot x times equals uh, that ground friction level that we declared up top, and then we're going to set the rigid body dot velocity back equal to velocity. And you understand what's happening now. Um, this ground friction level is going to be a number between zero and one. And every time, every time this function is called, we're going to set the velocity of the character in the x direction equal to a fraction of what it was, depending on what this ground friction level is. So it's going to get smaller and smaller every time. So if we set ground friction level equal to 0 0.5, then it's going to half every time. Okay. So that means we want to limit this ground friction level to be between 0 and 1. The way we do this is we say range 0, 1, like, uh, like this. And now if we head back to the game, or back to Unity, and check the script over here, once it updates, we have a slider that slides between 0 and 1 for the ground friction level. And if we set this up to 0 0.85, and we play the game, you'll see when we move sideways, the character eventually comes to a stop. So now we can adjust our max horizontal movement speed to whatever we want it to be. I'll put that at seven. And you see eventually it comes to a stop. And now depending on how long we want it to take, how long we want it to take for him to come to a stop, we can adjust this. So if we put this to 0 0.25, he's gonna come to a much quicker stop than before, as you can see. Um, for my version, I just put this on zero. So it like instantly cancels out. And yeah, so that's how we get uh, horizontal movement working. Okay, so I was a, <coughs> a big idiot. Um, I explained this wrong here. So get access returns uh, a float between negative one and one, depending on which direction you're going. So it can be 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 blah, 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 blah. And then get access raw returns either one, zero, or negative one. So now if we use get access raw instead, and we play the game and we have our ground friction level set to zero. Blah, blah. Um, as you can see, as soon as we let go of the, the, the keyboard, the character comes to a complete stop. Okay, so now we have uh, horizontal movement going. In the next episode, we will take a look at jumping. Okay, guys, I just really want to do a quick little recap of what the code is doing so far, just the main body of it. So the, thir the first thing that happens is we move, we apply a force to the rigid body over here. After that, we clamp the X velocity of the player. So it doesn't go over the max movement speed that we set. And then afterwards, if the player doesn't give any input, we apply a friction so the character comes to a complete stop. Super simple, not a lot, but it, it took me forever to get this to work correctly because I'm not that good. <laughs> But anyway, so uh, next episode, we'll start looking at uh, jumping and as a bunch of other things. The script is about 250 lines in total so far that I have. Um, I'm going to make sure I plan next episode out a lot better so that it, it just flows a lot better. I'm sorry if this one isn't as great. But yeah, um, I hope you guys like it. I hope you find it informative. If you have any suggestions, make sure to leave it down in the comments and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Bye.